boots on as fast as I could. They all had their boots on to slow me down a bit. Try and catch up to them before they sneak across and line up on these two deer, or at least two deer. There might be more. The group of deer we've spotted is 600 metres away up the ridge. Too far for a good shot. We're trying to get closer. It's early autumn in the central North Island of New Zealand. The raw, the mating season for red deer, is about to start. I've been hunting here for about 20 years, but this time I've swapped my rifle for a video camera. Which one you got? I can't move. Deer are a feral species and we have permits to hunt them from the Department of Conservation. My old hunting mates, Sean and Glenn, left camp before dawn to sidle around beneath the impenetrable leatherwood belt and into an adjacent gully. An hour later, as the sun peaked over the main range, was when the chase got going. Uh, John and I just having a coffee. And they bolt back into camp. Did you see anything? Hey. We need to act quickly. As the sun warms the slopes, the rising air could carry our scent up to the deer. The game would be over. New Zealand is in the grip of a severe 30-year drought. Setting off for the hills six days earlier, we are told that the deer have started roaring. This news eases our concern that the unseasonably dry heat has delayed the roar. Got a hypnotherapy to go on first before I try and lift this on my back. It's heavier than I am. Heavy rain and cold is forecast. This will help get the stags roaring too. Though we'll have to be careful. The river we'll be following can rise quickly. The red deer roar is the most popular time of year for hunting in New Zealand. Hopefully, we'll have the area to ourselves. The biggest safety risk hunters pose is to themselves and other hunters. 33 deer hunters were shot by other hunters in New Zealand between 1979 and 2002. Mm -hmm. To stalk a stag during the roar involves mimicking one. And therein lies the main danger. We're hunting for the freezer and over the next six days we'll only shoot as much as we can carry. The best chance we have of encountering a deer is at dawn or dusk, as deer are mainly nocturnal. Deer spend most daylight hours bedded down in shelter and hard to find. Then you need to get your boots wet first. So. We are away early hoping to stumble across deer on the way to the next hut. See me jumping from rock to rock. Low water levels, due to the drought, have left the river devoid of shingle, making rocks slippery and pools deeper. What normally is a two-hour trip, gingerly turns into oh, four. That's normally this gravel in here, and you don't even you might get wet to here. Yeah. Up to you. Seven species of deer are found in New Zealand, all introduced. The huts we stay in are part of a vast backcountry network built for government colours in the 1950s. The Department of Conservation maintains the huts, their meat safes and the network of tracks connecting them. The huts are important for hikers, tourists and hunters alike. Arriving at our next hut, we spy another cheeky visitor from foreign shores. I haven't got around the corner yet, but... Originally introduced to support a fur trade, possums nowadays are a pest. New Zealand has no native mammals, except one species of bat. Instead, New Zealand is home to many unusual birds. A plaque in the hut says we may see or hear a kiwi. It 
It's day three and the real hunt begins. Oh, there's heaps of fluffy stuff. It gets quite gorgy from the air up. The scrubby understory opens out and we slow down through an area more likely to hold animals. Hunting here in the bush requires complete silence. We've come across an old landslide. It's a good place to find deer grazing. However, it's too late in the day now, and perhaps too hot. Then, Sean spots a hind and her offspring, chewing their cud. Right, there's mum in front of it. She's just done it. She's done it. Yeah. We leave them, preferring to shoot stags. Heading home, we run into the gorge we were avoiding on the way up. Still, no animals are roaring. You know, when you roar, it actually come back up because mm. it come past. Come back for a look, didn't it? Yeah. Hunting on the tops requires a keen eye. Mine and Glenn's binoculars cost almost $3,000 a piece. We are heading to the high point. Underfoot, the carpet of subalpine plants has never appeared so dry. After lunch, we split up. One animal was spotted, too far away to chase. We must find the faint track back down the ridge before dark. It's day five now, and we have no meat to take home. Expectation haunts us. Then, we spot a stag and a second animal on a ridge a kilometre away. Our rifles have a range of 400 metres. We'll try and get closer for a shot. Well, it might be an idea if we can get down into shooting position on that spiker, have someone set up and then someone give a, a roar. Oh yeah, because he might just come up for a look. Two hours later, cresting the intervening ridge, two more stags are spotted far down in a gully in a catchment to the south. I don't know where his mate is. No, he's coming down to him. He's not far away from him now. Oh, he is too. We decide to stalk this second group and close the distance to them to 600 metres, being careful to remain unseen. It's still too far for a sure shot. Glenn and I wait while Sean and John begin to stalk closer still. Our plans have just changed on the way around to get these stags in the gully. The, the boys have seen the other, uh, the first lot of deer we saw this morning. You shot them, yeah? Great stuff. We didn't Success. And finally, we have some meat for the camp oven. Okay, so you're going to go down and help John, eh? While Sean and John butcher the stag, Glenn attempts to get closer to the other stags. All of a sudden, some hinds are flushed from cover and the stags melt unseen into the scrub. Useless. They could have been sitting up in there and we would have never have seen them. Fresh air helps preserve the meat. It will take hours to cool. We go to bed content. Though, a few more animals would be good. We're heading down river tomorrow and can carry the meat of about six deer. We're back to the deer shown at the beginning. After climbing a few hundred metres, the deer are spotted again. We need to get closer to have a better chance of shooting them all and shooting them cleanly. They know something is up. The hind tests the wind, trying to catch our scent to find out what we are. 
a young male appears. I'm surprised to see the first shot miss. We normally don't miss at this range. A second shot kills the young male instantly. The hind, also, is not hit with the first shot. Once hit with a single fatal shot, she runs a short distance, collapses and quickly dies. The hind's yearling is killed with one sure shot from close range. Sure, I hit. I struggled getting a real good rest. Mine and, mine and John's shot's a bit rushed because you're just looking at a front iron at a neck pretty much. That's pretty much all I had of him too. Yeah, not, not an easy neck shot. A bit of load, we will carry out 80% of the meat on each animal. Game should really be hung for a few days to age. But our stew tastes damn good. We have spent seven days in the hills and have encountered no one. We have covered over 100 kilometres and have shot four deer. The forecast rain never comes and the river remains passable. It takes us eight hours to walk out, over two days. Finally, we get a stag roaring on the last day. We leave him for another year. Home beckons. We have plenty of work ahead of us. I've got that big meat. I've got some more meat. What?